Duncan Parsons, Fairfax, Virginia, find out a little bit about our new president. Rachel, you there? There she is right there. How are you, Rachel? We're having an audio problem. I don't hear a thing. You can't hear me? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's better. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Rachel, tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, John Sigler was a friend of mine. I shot with he and his wife, Ingrid. I'm going to miss them as being the president of the NRA. But Ron Smites, I've never met the man. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, he's a great man uh, from New Mexico. He's been a member of the NRA for more than 20 years. So he, a life member of the NRA for more than 20 years. So he is very uh, passionate about the Second Amendment, about hunting and shooting. Uh, what a great man to come and lead uh, the National Rifle Association. He was first elected onto the Board of Directors in 2000 and has been very active and worked up the ranks to become president last year. Uh, behind Mr. Sigler, he was our first vice president. So he was elected president at our annual meetings a couple of weeks ago, and we're so thrilled and happy to have him come on board and lead the National Rifle Association. He has several of the initiatives that he wants to uh, advance. Uh, he wants to pick up where Mr. Sigler left off and advance NRA programs through NRA endowments. He wants to make sure that Folks who want to donate to the NRA have an, a method and an opportunity to do so so that we can be more effective in protecting hunting, shooting, and Second Amendment freedoms all across this country. Um, in addition to that, he's also very interested in reaching out to youth programs. Uh, we all know that it's that we've seen a decline in hunting. We've seen a decline in, in sports shooting among younger folks, and he wants to reach out to those people and make sure that we have a continued rich uh, shooting and hunting heritage uh, all across the country as well. So he has got a big heavy plate to, to take and big shoes to fill, but I tell you, what a great man and a great leader for the National Rifle Association. You, you know, I, I read a little bit about his background, and I think a lot of it is from New Mexico, is that right? Yes. Yes, so, so, and he has really a really strong foundation in the banking system. He does. Which, he which does. He is a, a very successful uh, person with some experience in the banking industry. And um, I'm telling you, uh, you know, each year we see a new, uh, someone with a new, more interesting background um, every year. And I tell you, um, each president is different and they bring a new set of skills to the table. And that's uh, one of the reasons why our board of directors and our president is so successful and we can move forward with our legislative and programming agendas each each uh, each term. Well, good, because we're looking forward to maybe a little more on uh, our new president. Um, but, you know, that may take a little time for him to develop, although he's been number two. I'm sure he's very comfortable with the new position. We all need to get to, you know, we all know Wayne, Lepa Wayne LaPierre and Chris Cox. We see a lot of, of them. We don't hear a lot about the president. And the only reason why I probably know something about that is because of my relationship with the past president. And their responsibilities are, yeah, you know, quite large. So maybe in the future, Rachel, we can talk a little bit more about Ron and, and, and perhaps uh, uh, the mission statement as well. Sure thing. We, uh, you know, as he gets accl acclimated to his new position, there will certainly be uh, more out there to learn about him and about his role in the NRA. Also, in our NRA publications, each month he'll have a column. That's so right. I encourage everyone to take a look at that. That's, uh, right. that's a great way to get to know our presidents and right. uh, learn about what their initiatives are for the NRA. And I will absolutely bring that to you guys as well. Okay, good. Now you have some more good news for us. I do. Um, as an amendment to the credit card bill that President Obama signed last week, the, uh, we managed to work with uh, Senators Coburn and um, some other great Senators, uh, Crapo and um, uh, I can't think of it right now, <laughs> but we worked with a several bipartisan group of folks to get an amendment on there that would allow firearms in national parks if you've gone through all of the legal channels to get your right to carry permits. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been something the National Rifle Association has been working on for years now. I know we talked about it um, a lot uh, last year and we've been talking about it 
oh gosh, I feel like I'm talking about it every week or so um, here in 2009, but finally uh, it is signed into law that uh, anyone who has a right to carry permit must fall, follow state law and can carry firearms on a national park lands. This is great news for anyone who is going to visit national parks who wants to make sure that they and their families are safe. Um, national parks and park lands have become a haven for crime. Uh, we've seen an increase in murders and assaults and you know uh, robberies and so this is uh, an important way, uh, an important victory in self-defense. And, and you know the national parks also having a problem with recruitment so they're not able to put enough officials in the field and for that reason alone is it, I think this bill was is timely and, and a good idea and I know that most of us probably uh, are going to take advantage of that, to, to say the least. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, of course, we encourage everyone to visit our national parks. What a great place to enjoy um, all of this country's beauty. But we also want folks to be able to protect themselves and have the option and the choice uh, if they so choose to carry a firearm. Right, right. Now, very good, Rachel. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for coming on this week, Rachel, and we'll see you again next week.